All right, you guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be reacting to how a quote unquote noob plays Call of Duty Cold War. So we're just going to be giving tips and tricks here on this specific player. So this guy, he sent me his gameplay on my Twitter. If you want me to react to your gameplay and give you guys some tips and tricks, make sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash real turbo man. And the links are down below in the description. That's literally all you have to do. It's very simple and easy. So as you can see here, this is his gameplay that he sent me. I have not seen it yet. You know, I want to have as much of a natural reaction as possible. So if I miss something in this guy's gameplay that you could chime in on and give more additional tips, feel free to leave a comment down below. So uh, we're going to try to help this guy as much as possible. He claims to be a noob. So, you know, let's see, man. Hopefully it's not a gameplay where he's just flexing and, you know, it's just whatever. You know, I just want to help this guy out. So uh, his name on YouTube is Virtual Gamer. Go ahead, check him out if you want to. Subscribe to the guy, show him some love. Uh, anyways, so let's go ahead and uh, play this gameplay. So he's playing on Nuketown. So, uh, you know, my first impression of Nuketown is, you know, there's really not too much you can do as far as strategy goes. But, you know, there are things that you can do to take control of the situation. So let's see what he chooses. Oh, he chooses a Tundra. Okay. Not too bad of a gun, in my opinion. So playing Domination, I assume. Okay, he's going to capture the flag. That's good. I would definitely take control of the middle of the map right away, but, you know, again, that's just me. So it looks like he's going straight away for the sniper shot. Ooh, just barely missed the guy. All right, so somebody's taking the B flag. I would definitely pay attention to what's going on at the B flag. That's literally free kills, especially from where he's standing at. Um, okay. Let's uh, go back here a second. So I'm not sure if... He realized it was like, oh, crap, it's way too late now to, to go back. Because as soon as he got out of the window, there was a guy right here. And uh, he was being shot at. I, I can't really tell. You know, the video is a little grainy on my end. Uh, but he was being shot at. So your first instinct when you're getting shot at, especially on a map like Nuketown, is just, you know, get out of harm's way, find cover, and stim shot. So him pushing up, obviously, is going to be the result of him, you know, dying like that. Okay, so he actually got lucky here. He found cover, so that's good. When you're getting shot and you're in a situation where you just re really have no choice, uh, find cover as much as possible on Nuketown. But unfortunately, there's an enemy there. And 100%, I 100% bet you that guy was the one who was capturing the B flag. That's what I was saying. Like, if you notice your your flag or a flag being taken and you've got a good advantage and advent, I can't even talk, advantageous situation like he was here in the window, then you should be looking at the B flag. Like I said, that's free kills. And as a result, uh, you know, it came back to haunt him and the guy killed him. Let's go ahead and rewind. Uh, let's go ahead and replay or not replay, but keep the, the gameplay going here. So he's going to go back to the same exact spot. Uh, teammates, two teammates have died outside. I'm not sure what he's doing. Is he going for like camel challenges or something? All right. So he got flanked. Let's go ahead and take a look at the minimap. Let's see what happened here, like how that happened. Okay, so teammate died literally right below him. So this is what happened right here. So he's too focused on the window right now. And I'm not sure what his overall goal is this game. Like I said, I'm not sure if he's going for camels or whatever. But either way, you should try to be aware as much as possible because that's going to make your journey to getting, you know, camel challenges done a lot more frustrating, obviously, if you keep dying and spawning in and it's the end of the cycle. So if you look at the minimap, uh, there's a blue skull indicating his teammate died and there's a red dot. So obviously the red dot is the guy who killed his teammate who's directly below him. So, you know, if you're more aware of those type of things, then, you know, you should switch to your, your other gun and get ready for the next gunfight. Now he got flanked by the same guy that killed his teammate downstairs, you know? Okay. Let's see if he goes. Okay. So now he's in a different spot. Okay. So the, the enemy is like running around behind him. That was actually a good kill. Good kill on that. He's checking his lines of sights before he turns around corner, so that's good. Um, you know, honestly, like looking at this gameplay, I'm not really sure if this guy is a complete noob. Because every time he turns a corner, he's pre-aiming, and that's pretty much the most common mistake that noobs actually make. Now, he is playing a little cautious, you know, which is fine. Obviously, his team is like trapped in their spawn right now. So there really isn't much you can do, but I would rather just go back into the house, get high ground, pick people off as they, you know, advance through the map. All right. Okay, th there's nothing going on in the house right now because you've got two teammates down here pretty much uh, protecting the stairs going upstairs. So there's no reason why you should be 
you know, looking into places like that. So let me explain my reasoning for that. Like, you know, why I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but you know, this is where I come from with this type of criticism. Uh, so you have two teammates down here, you know, and earlier he was like looking into the doorway that goes up to the stairs. If you're associating the minimap with where your teammates are, you know, they're right below you. If there was an enemy down there, your teammates would have either a shot the guy or B, they would have been killed. So, you know, this just goes back to my roots as a chess player. I grew up a lot of chess. I, I grew up playing a lot of chess and my, my coach teacher used to tell me all the time, like, you know, if you're going to make a move on the chessboard, make sure it uh, contributes to something productive. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just move a pawn just to move a pawn. You're wasting your move. So in my opinion, this was uh, an example of that. You're wasting a move. So, you know, just pay attention to areas, you know, that are productive basically is what I'm trying to say. You know, it's really hard to explain. Uh, in a Call of Duty sense, but you know that's where I was going with that kind of analogy. So again, this is your spawn. You know, there's no reason to to look back there. You know, you've got a teammate back there. He's not, you know, shooting anybody. He's not dying or anything. So he decides to push up. He gets stunned here. So I would definitely go prone. You know, make yourself as hard to see as possible versus the enemies. You know, and like I was saying about Nuketown, there's really nothing you can do in certain situations. It is just what it is. That was good reaction time right there. Good kill. Let me move the uh, mouse out of the way here. So the enemy team is playing rather aggressive. And like I said, what you can do is just go up to the second roof, uh, second story, and just pick them off. Because, dude, they're literally giving you free kills. So just go up here. That's exactly what I, I would do. Okay, that's a good play right there to put the proximity mine. Um... Okay, yeah, so if if you know for a fact that you're going to be going down a line of sight with your sniper or aiming down a line of sight with your sniper, you should definitely, you know, pre-aim before you even, like, scoot yourself towards that line of sight because somebody on the other end of the map could be trying to accomplish the same thing as you, which is get those sniper kills or whatever. All right, so let me explain something here about this side of the map. It's literally a mirror image of the other end, so you should play... There you go, ADS as you scoot. And, you know, that's exactly what I was just talking about. That is what you want to do, you know. Every time there's a line of sight, you want to pre-aim. You know, you don't want to just go into the line of sight because somebody might be already aiming down. Great shot. That was a good shot right there. And, um, yeah, I might have to, like, fast forward this stuff because we're playing Domination. I don't want this uh, video to be too long or whatever. Okay, so it looks like the enemy team is on B right now. Okay, that was a good Semtex throw. Stay in cover. I would not challenge that at all. Stim shot. I would stim shot. There you go. Yeah, this guy knows. Uh, so he knows what he's doing. So he's checking the doorway here just in case somebody actually snuck by his teammates to go upstairs. This is what I'm talking about. Free kills. You know, it, as, as lame as it sounds to give this kind of advice, like, you got to think about it this way. Have you ever tried running across Nuketown, right? You get picked off by people sitting in windows all the time or just camping in corners, you know, on the outer edges of the map. Look, you could either be that guy that keeps getting killed by those people or you're the one that's doing it to them. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm coming from with that. Like, like I said, Nuketown, there really is no other way around it. You're literally like head to head facing each other. It's all about who's got the best positions possible. Uh, to be able to get the most amount of kills. You know, that's really what it is. All right, so moving on to the second round here. Okay, we're approaching nine minutes. Not too bad. All right, so, um, yeah. What I would recommend for actual advice here to do is try to control the middle of the map. I made a video on Nuketown showing how I accomplished just that. You have to play a little bit of aggressive uh, semi-aggressive in the beginning to take control of the middle of the map and that's a line of sight that you have to be aware of as well people trying to go for the long shots you know they'll hide in the garage or whatever and try to kill you all right so there's a guy at the edge of the bus here so he needs to be aware of that that's a good kill but there's still a guy right there i'm not sure if teammate killed him so he's pushing up okay good this is exactly what you want to do so even if he died that's all right try it again even if you die repeatedly try and fight your way for a position you have to fight for a position in this map so there's a guy in the truck here pre-aim that he's gonna go around for the flank i would definitely go upstairs 
when it, whenever you see enemies pushing in, try not to challenge them. Just go upstairs. It'll give you a better chance because it gives you some of that buffer between yourself and the enemy and uh, a chance to react. So I think there's somebody in their spawn right now. I saw a little ping. Def they're definitely upstairs. They just put down a sentry gun. I'm looking at the minimap and they're upstairs. They're trying to they're trying to kill you guys in your spawn. So the spawns are probably going to flip here in a little bit. Okay, yeah, you definitely want to... There you go. Get out of this situation. This is a bad situation. Yep. Spawns are flipping now. Spawns are flipping. So you need to get up here. Kill this guy. No, don't do it. Yeah, so... Usually when the spawns flip like that and you're the only one on the other end of the map, what I would typically do is just pre-aim outside of the doorway. So uh, let's see if we can find that spot again. So let's just pause it right here. So at this point, I will not cross this doorway at all. It's a, under very... I don't know what's going on here. Under very rare circumstances, I'm going to go out here. And I only do that if I literally see enemies within my plane sight. So if they spawn in right there, I'll shoot them from where I'm at here. And, you know, you got to make sure there's no enemies on your left side. You know, th that's exactly why uh, you died here. You got a little too greedy. You saw that they were all spawning in here. You know, I understand. You know, we can all we all get greedy sometimes. But that's one of the situations that you can avoid in the future. You know, that's the whole point of this video. Um, not sure if I agree with that sentry gun placement. I definitely would have placed it a little bit farther back. Because, uh, like I said, the closer you put that sentry gun the more chances that you give the enemy to advance forward, if that makes sense, you know, because the sentry gun is not going to, you know, rain fire or uh, start shooting. Uh, there's like a delay. So, you know, maybe he didn't know that and that's completely fine. And he got clipped from the left side. So I'm not sure if I saw you check your left side before you went out here. All right. So he's checking. He's checking the area. He's checking his me. Okay. He's ADSing. Okay, so he, he barely glanced to the left. So in game, you might want to, you know, over exaggerate it a little bit, you know, poof, quick to the left and then, you know, back to the task at hand. So that's why he probably missed the guy that was camping at B, you know, and this is good what he's doing. But like I said, sometimes you just can't help those situations. But there are things that you can do to, you know, minimize the amount of, you know, times that you die by doing those small little adjustments to your gameplay. So he threw down his care package. Hopefully he gets something great out of it, like a chopper gunner or something. You know, good kills from the spawn right there. He's aware. He's trying to keep himself alive so he can get this care package. What did he get? Okay, he got a... What is that? A VTOL or a fire? What do we call that? Napalm strike? So he's kind of waiting to see where they spawn in. All right, let's see if he gets a couple kills. The middle of the area is a good choice for sure. And he got like two kills out of it. Not too bad. Uh, but this positioning, you know, where you're back in your spawn like that, it's not a good idea because you're still giving the opponents a chance to push up and trap you in your spawn. So definitely move into the house again. Move back into the house. Go up second floor. Get high ground. High ground gives you a good vantage point of literally, you know, all the best lines of sights on Nuketown. So that's just the result of that. So, you know, I, uh, I'm looking at the time here. It's 14 minutes now. I just want this to be like maybe around 15, 16 minutes tops. And I'm trying to go through these videos without really editing down too much because I want to, you know, give my most authentic reaction as possible here. All right, so they're going to be pushing in. They're pushing in. I was looking at the minimap there. That was a good kill. Good awareness. Someone in the garage. Someone's definitely in the garage. You got to turn to your left. Turn to your left. Yeah, there are a lot of, you know, more important things happening here than, you know, getting rid of a proximity mine, honestly. Like, looking at the minimap, there you go. Two flanks. Great job. Now they're at the C flag. In this situation, it's fine to just jump out there like that because this is where your teammates are spawning in from, so you're not going to get over overcrowded by enemies. Um, You know, honestly, at this point, there's really no reason to, like, try to play the objective. You guys are down big. Very, very small percentage of chance that you guys are going to come back and win this gunfight. So, yeah, I think I'm going to... Yeah, the gameplay is almost ending here. I don't think he shows his final score there. Oh, wait. Yep. 27 and 12. You know, not too bad. That's really not too bad. But there were definitely, you know, areas in his game that he could have improved on. And hopefully I touched up upon on some good things. And like I said, leave your comments down below. 
on things that he could do better, you know, uh, whether it could have been his class setup, the attachments he used, uh, his decision making, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this this series is all about helping people get better at the game. So if you want me to react to your gameplay, remember follow me on Twitter and send me your YouTube video links, and I will take a look at it in the order that I do receive them. So remember, don't send me any flexing gameplays. I do not want to see that stuff. I'm just going to ignore it. I want to see gameplays where, you know, you could actually improve on and it will help the rest of my audience, you know, gather some tips and tricks from it. You know, people will learn from this video as well. So hopefully you guys do enjoy. Make sure to drop a like, support the series and subscribe if you're brand new around here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go, baby.